Hello and welcome to Point of View Podcasts, a series of conversations from Kaufman Hall and Associates about the challenges and opportunities now facing hospitals and health systems. One topic of increasing interest for hospitals today is the variation in the way healthcare is delivered in the U.S. Specifically, the focus is on why there is such a large amount of clinical practice variation that occurs across regions, across hospitals in a region, and even across doctors in a hospital. Achieving a deeper understanding of this variation can help hospitals improve quality of care and lower overall health care costs. To learn more about clinical variation and how hospitals can begin to address the challenge, we sit down with Dr. Scott Cullen, Senior Vice President in the Physician Strategy Practice at Kaufman Hall & Associates. Dr. Cullen, even for patients with the same diagnosis, there's no single way medicine should be practiced. So why is it important to understand variation in clinical practice? At the highest level, I think it's important to understand that we are not necessarily getting more value for the money that we're spending right now. Quality is not equivalent to cost in our present system, and the main reason for that is that there is so much variation. Individual patients and individual practitioners do often have appropriate reasons for varying their practice. The vast majority of variation out there is probably unjustified. So we expect that improving the picture on variation should also improve quality and outcomes. This is going to result probably in lower utilization of certain kinds of services as well, and hopefully lowering overall health care costs. It's important to understand that there is a level of appropriate variation in how care can be provided to individual patients, but there's also a significant degree of inappropriate variation that's occurring right now in medical care nationally and locally. So what is inappropriate clinical practice variation? Inappropriate clinical practice variation is care that's being driven oftentimes by non-clinical factors. We certainly have a wealth of evidence-based medicine to back up our approaches to how we should practice in regards to specific disease entities or patient conditions. But we all know that in addition to what evidence shows, um, where there is evidence, that we often bring other factors into the process of making decisions about how patients are treated. Among those, obviously, are legal and liability protection considerations, as well as financial considerations, whether those financial considerations are conscious or unconscious. One issue might be whether or not you happen to own a diagnostic center or your practice that you're a part of owns a diagnostic center. Studies have clearly shown that we're far more likely to order more testing when more testing is readily available and its use benefits us. Why can this inappropriate clinical practice variation become a problem for hospitals or healthcare systems? There are several ways in which this is a problem. First of all, inappropriate variation often leads to disparate outcomes. So either unanticipated outcomes or suboptimal outcomes for patients. This, by extension, then can lead to measurement and reputational problems for healthcare providers, whether it's the physicians or the hospital systems to which they are practicing in or are affiliated. And finally, it's obviously a cost issue. I have spoken with clients who have facilitated debates amongst some of their leading clinical thinkers around, for instance, how many CBCs, which are complete blood cell count, you need on a patient who's having a routine hip transplant. And the debate between some leading orthopedists might be, well, we need three on a given hospitalization, or maybe we need five. And they'll go at that in a very heated debate when what the CMO in that situation ultimately says, all right then, so what I hear you saying is that 37 is too many. So there's often quite a bit of outlier behavior that drives a significant amount of cost with little or no benefit to patients, in fact, often to a patient's detriment. Let's talk about some of the challenges hospitals will be faced with in working to reduce variation in clinical practice. What do you see as the major challenge? One of the first challenges is actually getting at the data around clinical practice variation. Traditionally, as provider organizations, we haven't done a stellar job of collecting information on outcomes. Outcomes are actually often difficult to measure, either because The measurement of the event that we're trying to identify occurs either outside the hospital or when it occurs inside the hospital, 
there are often subtle shadings of what defines an optimal versus a non-optimal outcome, except for the very most gross examples, such as whether a patient survives or not. But really, if we're going to provide improved quality of care, we're going to need to be able to differentiate our outcomes much more granularly than that. How are leading healthcare organizations beginning to solve that? Well, there are a variety of approaches. Some are building their own capabilities in-house in terms of clinical data warehousing and collecting data through their electronic medical records. Other organizations who may not have the capital capacity to do that sort of thing, which is a multi-million dollar venture, um, are often outsourcing that capability to a number of vendors that have either been around in the market now for some time or are emerging as uh, folks who can help hospitals collect their data and then provide analytics to turn that data into information and really measure the outcomes that they want to get at. What approach to data are you finding successful regardless of the size of the hospital or the health system? Typically, I think we would approach the data issue by first using whatever's available at the institution to identify what the high cost and high variability areas are. We then get into a deeper examination based on, say, the top six or seven areas of variation. Look at the claims data around those and begin to understand at a physician level and a facility level who are the outliers, who are the ones who are not that three to five CVCs, but the 37 CVCs, and start to identify who those folks are and start to understand what, the, what may be driving that kind of behavior. Then what we typically do next is assist them in defining clinical programs for a limited set of conditions that they're going to be able to engage in reducing those variations. Once they have those tools in hand, they're then able to extend those programs and gather more of that value as they work toward addressing clinical practice variation in other areas going forward. You talk about levers of variation. What does this mean and why is this a key concept? Levers of variation are essentially enablers or barriers to change. So what we'll need to change in either physician behavior or in hospital processes or in the decision-making processes that will have the most direct impact on the variation in practice. What are some specific examples? Access to information through those analytics are one of the key drivers. We can look as far back as 50 or 60 years at uh, the experience with C-sections in Maine where rates of C-sections were in the 60 plus range when the national standard was 35 percent. But doctors in that area thought nothing of it until people started actually measuring that. And what's most remarkable is that once that data was disseminated, we saw C-section rates drop dramatically, nearly down to the national standard, just on the basis of providing that information and letting them know that those folks were outliers relative to the rest of the country. So they had to ask themselves the question, are my patients somehow different from women having C-sections everywhere else in the country? And clearly the answer was no. What we do know, though, is that physicians, when they believe in the data, are extremely responsive and sensitive to the data, and behavior will change, often without any inducement other than the fact that they know that they're outliers. What kind of strategies can hospitals come up with for accomplishing their reduction goals? What we've seen in leading institutions is, for example, a quarterly meeting with members of the network where they engage in a number of activities. One is best practices dissemination. So the folks who are the positive outliers, the folks who are the most cost effective and are driving reductions in variation, are sharing their data and sharing their practices so that other providers can follow them. The culture of the physician network and hospital are going to determine whether data is shared completely transparently or whether it's shared individually initially to drive performance change. And that's often compelling in and of itself. Aside from that first piece, which is some degree of transparency around the data itself, 
There are also process change opportunities as well. That comes in once we've actually identified the enablers or the barriers, the levers to, to variation, and determined that some of those levers may actually reside within the processes of the hospitals in which physicians are practicing or offices are practicing. So for example, when we think about uh, University of Pennsylvania's boost program to reduce readmissions, that involves a major process change in the relationship between case coordinators who are managing the discharge of patients from the hospital and skilled nursing facilities where those patients are going. They share a discharge summary and a very timely sheet which gives medication information and other key information so that that transition is effectively managed. This has a significant effect on hospital readmissions from the skilled nursing facilities. Why is it important for hospitals to start dealing with this now? We know that the landscape is changing due to pressures from employers, due to pressures from payers. Reimbursement models are going to be shifting from a volume-based approach to a value-based approach. And what that means essentially is that provider organizations are going to be taking on responsibility and risk for more and more of the cost of care. So what may have been coming out of the payer's pocket for a long time in terms of absorbing the cost of inappropriate variation is going to begin to come out of the pockets of the providers themselves. How far along are hospitals across the country in addressing clinical variation? I think it's actually a frontier area right now. Nationally, most markets have not yet shifted to a more value-based approach. But in those areas that have, it's been a powerful motivator for building these kinds of programs. We have seen some significant and public successes in these areas at some institutions who are advertising that They're willing now to guarantee uh, the costs for certain procedures to payers, independent of patient outcomes. We've also seen others who are verging on a virtual guarantee of specific outcomes for patients. However, I'd say overall, nationally, this is something that most organizational leaders are thinking about but have not yet been able to find the resources to engage in these kinds of efforts or the expertise to assist them in doing so. That was Dr. Scott Cullen, Senior Vice President in the Physician Strategy Practice at Kaufman Hall & Associates. To hear more in this series, Point of View Podcast, visit us online at www.kaufmanhall.com.